Hi, I'm Emma. I'm a certified Dipsada specialist. And in today's video, I'm going to take you through how to create forms inside of Dipsada, specifically how to create questionnaires if you're a coach. So inside of Dipsado, there are several types of forms. And if you go here on your left hand menu, you'll see forms here under templates. So inside of forms, there are a lot of different types. So there's contracts, which is pretty self-explanatory, sub agreements. So like if you have a subcontract, uh, like a what it says here, like a release, a waiver, those would go under sub agreements. Um, and then you have questionnaires, which is what we'll cover today proposals, which are to get someone to select a package to work with you, and then lead capture forms, which are forms for those who are entering to learn more about your services. So these generally get embedded on your website, or you can send direct links to them. But today we're going to cover questionnaires. So there are three ways to create forms inside of Dipsado. One is to start with a blank form, and the way to do that is to just click this plus sign, and you'll have a blank form, and you can drag elements to create the form that you want. I'm going to go back. The next way is to use a form that's already in your account. There are some forms that are pre-populated into each Dubsado account, so these two would be pre-populated. So you can just simply look at them, see if they're what you want. So this is an intake questionnaire. So let's say this is the one that you want. I'm going to go back. Inside, uh, in here, you're just going to click this duplicate icon. So I have a copy of that, and I can work off of that and then keep the original in case you need it for something else. So that's the second way. The third way is to go to the template library. And here you're going to see a number of different forms. Um, and you can just preview them and see which one is right for you. And then it will ask you if you want to add it to your account. Um, there are some here for coaching specifically. Let me scroll a bit. So there is a coaching contract. And I know there's a questionnaire as well somewhere. Here it is. So let's preview that. So this has a number of different questions. And if these work for your coaching business, you can use this and alter it, you know, to fit your needs. So if this works, has a lot of questions. <laughs> if it works for you, all you're going to do is click copy to your account. OK, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to work off of this questionnaire. I'm going to adapt it so it works as a coaching intake questionnaire. OK, so. If you know what questions you want to use in your questionnaire, that's great. I would write them down separately just to get clear on what you want to use and then go ahead and add them into Dipsado. Another way is you can look online. There are a lot of examples of intake questionnaires for coaches and you can take, you know, questions that resonate with you. You can use those inside of your questionnaire. So I took some questions from a blog post that I found. And I'm going to use some of those inside of this questionnaire. So let me go through this and I'm going to edit it. I'm going to delete things. I'm going to add things. And I'm going to try to make use of all these different blocks here or as many as I can to show you what each of these are. OK, so I don't need company name. When you ask questions inside of an intake questionnaire, just make sure that it's information that you don't have at all. Like if you had your client fill out an intake form when you first spoke to them and you already asked them for their email address, don't ask for it again. So in this case, I'm going to assume that I already have this client's email address. So I'm going to do this. I'm just going to write email and I'm going to go to smart fields and I'm going to find email, right? So here it'll show the client's name, because I already have that from an intake form, let's assume, their email, and they can look and see if it doesn't fit, if it's not the right one, they can let me know. I'm going to ask them for their street address, their city, state, zip code, all of this is fine. I'm going to ask them for their phone number, their Instagram profile. I'm going to use date now, okay? I'm going to put this in here, and it's going to auto populate like a generic question that comes with this date um, element. And I'm going to change that and I'm just going to say birthday. I want to know what their birthday is so I can congratulate them, send them something. Let's think of it that way. 
I'm going to make it required. And here, if you're asking them for, for instance, the question is, uh, what is your preferred project start date? Like something you would ask earlier on, um, not so much for coaches, but for like web designers or brand designers, you can add a project start date here and it'll map to your project inside of Dipsado. Um, I usually don't ask the client what the project start date is. I want to set that, but um, just so you understand what these mapped fields are. And let's say um, if you wanted to, I wanted to ask them something about their preferred method of communication. So I'm going to create a checkbox here. And here you can make it required. You can format it vertically. So look down, you can see that it, it switched over here. I prefer it to be formatted vertically. Um, let's say I want to understand what's the best way to communicate with them. So, and only, I would only put options that I'm willing to work with. So I'm just going to switch these out. Um, so now it's getting kind of long. So what I'm going to do is I am going to pull a column here. And you can remove the title so it looks cleaner. And I'm going to keep it as two. You can make it three or four, OK? And I'm just going to drag the phone number over here, birthday as well, Instagram profile as well. And I'm going to drag that there. So that looks a little like tidier, let's say, versus what was there before. But you don't want it to be too long, because if it's too long, then it feels a little bit overwhelming to the client. And it's like, oh, this is so long. I have to fill out so many things. So by structuring it this way, you kind of help the client. Um, you keep it more compact. So goals. Um, let's say one of the questions I'm going to ask, I'm going to use the drop down box now. Dipsado doesn't have scales like a radio button scale or a slider scale. I wish they did. But um, in order to achieve something similar, you would use drop down boxes. So let's say, okay, I'm going to make this a required question and I am going to start filling out the number scale. Okay. So when a client, yeah, when a client would click on it, you can kind of see, we can preview it later, but just so that you understand what I'm trying to do. These are all questions that I just found on a blog post about um, intake questionnaires for coaches. So I'm borrowing these questions. And if I wanted to create, this is a free response. So you see here, there's a free response and a short answer. Free response allows your client to fill out several paragraphs, let's say. Short answer is more for these types of questions, street, city, state. Um, and let's go back here. This maps to address, right? So you can map the short answers to a lot of different options inside of a client's project, right? So if I ask them for their Instagram profile, it maps to Instagram, right? So it'll populate that inside of the client's file. So let me duplicate this to add the next question. Now I'm going to add another one to 10 type question. So instead of starting from scratch, I'm simply going to duplicate this one and I am going to drag it down. And <clears throat> now I am going to add a yes, no question. So this is simply a two option answer using a radio button <laughs> and it auto the default is this question. So just to point out, like these are not the questions you have to use. These are just questions that I found um, that are used in some coach intake forms. Um, I'm not saying these are the questions you have to use. You can adapt it to whatever, you know, you need in your business. There are a lot of blog posts out there. There are a lot of people who even sell um, questionnaires for coaches. So um, if you're not sure, just take a look at some of those and see what fits you best. So I'm going to delete these. I don't need any of these. Um, this is a file uploader. I'm, I don't need it, but <clears throat> this allows clients to drop files. So especially for like web designers, brand designers, these are great because you can have clients add photos, files. Um, you can even 
if I click on it, you can allow multiple types of files or you can decide to only allow for images, for instance. Um, so yeah, this is one way to collect uh, files from your clients. I'm gonna remove it, I don't need it here. Just to go over some of the elements that we haven't used, I'm gonna put an image down here and I'm gonna add a text box here. <clears throat> because I don't have like spacers like you would in a program like Squarespace, the best way to do that in Dubsado is simply to add a text box, delete the contents and just hit enter. And you can see down there, it's creating a spacer. So other elements that I didn't use inside of this form, I used columns, text box, images, yes, no, free response, short answer, drop down, check boxes at the very top, date select, code block I did not use in this case. Um, the code blocks, you simply drag it in and you are going to replace that with uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Um, this is used basically to enhance your form, to add elements that don't exist in Dubsado, but that you can code. Inside of Dubsado's reference library, there are some examples of CSS code to add things like accordion boxes. That's what the code block is for. I'm going to remove it. Um, another element, we went over the file uploader. Another thing is project tracking. So this will basically, you can ask people where they heard about you and you can, um, you can connect that to project sources. So you create the project sources, you add those into Dubsado, like where people find you. You can put Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, whatever, um, word of mouth, referral. Um, you can add all of those options here and have them select from that, okay? Um, I use this not inside of questionnaires. I use it actually in my lead capture form because I want to know where people found out about me and that's, you know, they're just signing up for a call and that's basically for me the best place to ask this question. So I'm going to remove it. And now what I'm going to look at is the settings. I want to take you through what each of these are. So you can set expiration dates for questionnaires and proposals inside of Dubsado. So relative, uh, you can tie that back to project start date, project end date, or after apply to project. I have my proposals expire after like 10 days after it's been applied to a project because I want to set a limit. I don't want that proposal to live on forever. Like they open it two years later and then they sign up. Maybe my pricing's changed, all these different things. So. I set an expiration on my proposals, but you can set it on questionnaires as well. And so that would be, you tie it to whatever trigger works best for you. And then you can also add a reminder. So you can set it to hours, days, or weeks before the expiration. So it'll send them an email. And the email that it sends is, I'll show you where that is. Let's, let's, let me save this. That email reminder comes here. If you go to canned emails, uh, <laughs> if you go to canned emails, it's in up here in edit templates, it's form reminder. So the only watch out here is if you do set a form reminder, it's going to be the same one for all of your forms. So re regardless of if it's a proposal or a, a questionnaire, it's going to send the same uh, email if you're setting the reminder. So just make sure that whatever you're using, you remember where it's being used so that the email makes sense for all of the places that you're using it. I'm gonna go back, it was this one. So that was for the relative expiration date. If you go to fixed, it's just gonna set it on a date, a specific date that you decide. And no expiration, that's the default of all forms in Dubsado. Uh, question styling here, basically it's the font for the questions, not the text boxes, only the questions. So let's say I want to change it to this one. This text has not changed, but here these have all been adapted. And you can select the size and you can select the color, right? And you can add a hex code. And you can set the text of the submit button. If you want it to be something specific and said instead of the default, which is submit, you can add that text over here. A completion alert, it's a pop-up that appears when they submit. You can add the 
the header of that pop-up and the, the body text of that pop-up. And then here, the default of Dubsado Forms is for them to be public. Uh, if you want it to be private, that means that the client has to be signed into their client portal, which means that you have to activate the client portal for that client. They have to add their password, sign in, and then they'll be able to see the form. So just so you're clear what private means. the Like I said, the default is simply public. That's usually how I keep it. But it means that if someone sends the link to someone else, they can fill out the form on their behalf, let's say. Um, so let's go back to forms. Um, so here you can you know, start adding elements and switch it up. I'm going to simply add this one. You can see it's pretty small. It's because this has been set to 33. So if I change that, that's what it's gonna look like. You can change the text inside of your text boxes. You have to do those one by one. You can't change all of them at once, not like the questions. Um, so let's say this is my brand, um, font. This is the font that I use. I think it's the same one I used up here. Um, you can change it here as well. Your details, let's change that as well. And down here, I'm going to add this. Okay, so let me preview. So save and preview. So this is what my client's going to see, right? And you can add more images in here. You can, um, it's completely up to you. I just wanted to show you what the different elements inside of a Dubsado form do and how you can create a simple intake questionnaire for a coaching business. So that was it. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. And as always, if you need support with your Dubsado setup or you simply have a number of updates that you need in Dubsado, uh, feel free to book a call. I offer Dubsado full setup packages and also VIP days if you don't need a full setup but just need help with forms or you need to update workflows or clean up your account and all those sort of things. So I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time. Bye.